So what we can do is, oh, I love that mug. Mm. Where's that from? It's from? Oh my God, it's like 10 pounds from Anthropology and it was from TK Maxx, it's like a Christmas present. I love Anthropology. Oh my God, and I was like, it's such a bougie, and it's the perfect size. It's like, yeah, just that looks really nice. nice. That you feel like you've just got the perfect amount without like drowning you like a Sports Direct mug. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming in that sea. <laughs> yeah. Um, love okay. the jumper. Thank you. It's from Tesco. Got it for Christmas. Oh, cute colour. I know, and I have a I have a green one as well. Hold on. Give me a little haul. This one. Also from Tesco. <gasps> love that Tesco bringing the goods. I know it doesn't look that green on camera, but it's more like. Is it like a mint green? Yeah. A door. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> I never know when whether you can hear me through this microphone or the microphone from my laptop. I'm really confused. So I'm like conscious of not touching this microphone too much. But anyway, hopefully the sound is okay. Um, we're just gonna have to like try not to talk at the same time, which is so hard because when we get carried away, we're just like, but Zoom takes a while to catch up with who's talking, so. So should we kick off and introduce ourselves? I think we should. Nice. Um, hi, I'm Em. And I'm Evie. Um, and this is our Let's Be Honest podcast. Um, where we're just going to chat and be honest. Just have a good time. Yeah, we hope this brightens your Wednesday or whatever day you're watching or listening to this on. Um, and should we get started? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so I think because this is our first episode, we're just gonna tell us who you are. Tell us. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> um, tell tell you who we are. Um, how did we meet? And just a, a bit of a scoop on us, so you feel a bit more in our little group. We met. When did we meet? <laughs> 2016. I think it was 2015 because we left school summer of 2016. Mm -hmm. So that would have been year 13. Yeah. And we, I'm pretty sure we met year 12 because it was with, I'm Spanish. sure it was Mr. Stone's Spanish class. It was. And he was year 12, yeah. What a throwback. Do you want to talk about our meet cute? Oh my word. <laughs> what? Can we just reference a the holiday there? A little meet cute that has taught the entire world what that is. Yeah. So, you know, I think I was quite scared in year 12. I was quite like, table on my own in Spanish, quite happy just to be a bit segregated. Well, you were on one side, I can't remember who was on your table, but you were on one side of the classroom. Yeah. And I was on the other. It's like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> um, and sometime after the lesson had ended, we went down these like really hard, cold stone steps. And for some reason I lost my footing and I fell from like the top of the stairs all the way to the bottom and this lovely gal over here was right behind me and I think I just sat there for a while like a bit shocked and then just burst out laughing. Yeah you did and then I wasn't sure because you started laughing and I was like oh my god is she okay because I find it really uncomfortable when people hurt themselves I just never know how to act so I was like oh my god are you okay and then when you were laughing I was like okay is this like like nervous laughter as in like I'm in pain <laughs> or is it like I'm actually okay and thankfully all was well <laughs> and that's how we became friends and then yeah. I think we were next to each other like every lesson therefore yeah you were like whenever they were like you need to get partners to do some Spanish speaking we were like yep <laughs> <laughs> um so that was our lovely little meet you and then we've just been kind of inseparable ever since I don't, I find it so difficult when I don't speak to you. I know. And it will be it's like weird. hours and I'll be like, oh my God, I haven't spoken to you in such a long time. I think it's hard as well because you're in London and I'm further back home down south. And it's, it's just weird. Like, I don't like that we're not in the same 10 minute vicinity. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Henry quite understands my like attachment because I'll just be sitting on the sofa. I'll, I'll have had the worst day ever. This week has been challenging people, but we're gonna give ourselves <laughs> a break. 
Um, and I was just like, I just need to watch Shit's Creek and talk to Evie. And he was like, you do that, hon. <laughs> and what did we do? <laughs> exactly. So what are you doing in the South Coast? Oh, more like, what am I not doing? Um, <laughs> I am unemployed. Um, and just applying for jobs, getting rejected, applying for jobs, getting rejected, um, watching shows, you know, just trying to stay positive, but it's hard. Let me yeah. tell you. So for the listeners, what did you do at university and what you're applying for? Okay, so I went to the University of East Anglia and I did film and television. Yeah, thank you. Graduated with a 2-1. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, absolutely loved it. Like just, oh, it was, it, it, it breaks my heart that our final year ended the way it did because I just feel like I, we were robbed. <laughs> so robbed. And I know so- that people, I know that people now who are at uni are going through a terrible time. Um but anyway so yeah I did film and tv applying for jobs in film and tv but it's a very hard industry to get into very competitive which is is so funny to me because at school I was the only person in our entire academic year group going to do film and tv um and was like yeah like and and kind of got like some weird comments from teachers about doing it and like it's not academic enough blah 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 blah. (laughs) um but but it's funny because I know like five other people from our year group now who want to go into film and TV and you know know. so bad about that is that we went to a fairly nice school really affluent people went really intelligent people like I'd say we had a good like mix of people and what I don't like is teachers not encouraging you to pursue your dream So why, why film and TV? Um, I don't know really. I always sort of say that I think it stemmed from my mum's career mm-hmm. because she was a producer um, at Radio 2. So growing up, I would go and visit her and kind of see what that was all about. And obviously radio is part of like the entertainment world. So I, I, part of me thinks it stemmed from that, but I also think it just stems from my love of watching film and TV shows. and. Oh, yeah and from just like as long as I can remember I've always been interested in like how why did they choose that shot why did they do this and did da and trying to like over analyze everything if you ever watch anything with Evie she will sit there and go oh my god did you see that shot and I'll be like no. <laughs> and I know you look at tv sometimes it blows my mind um so for anyone out there filming Wanting to go into film and TV, Evie yeah, stick is to it, guru. Seriously, don't give up because honestly, like for me, at least for me, it's the only thing I know that that's a career I want to go into, um, and that I'm like relatively good at. Um, and everyone's like, oh, but like you're good at sport, you could go into sport, and I'm like, but that's not that's a hobby that's not something I can see myself doing as a career and there's two very different things between hobby and career so um yeah so applying for film and tv jobs is currently the situation but it's a it's really hard because there's not a lot of graduate related jobs Mm -hmm. um and also a lot of them say you can't apply if you have a degree in film and tv which is really great (laughs) um and yeah so it is it is really hard um especially because you're being judged on a piece of paper like I haven't got a single interview like anything um because I literally have two weeks of work experience under my belt other than my degree um and that's that's like actually normal like it's so hard to get experience in the industry because they say you need experience to have work experience and I'm like how how does that work help me out people exactly like I can't get experience without you just taking a risk and just letting me have a go so anyway so that's one half of jobs I'm applying for and then on the other hand I'm applying for like Aldi Waitrose like just supermarket jobs um because well that's the only thing that's open at the minute so it's the only Boris yeah thanks Boris it's the only (laughs) hope I have so um yeah that's currently what's going on in my world which is a stress because 
it's just so uncertain times are so uncertain jobs are so uncertain you know there's like internships and things and then they say oh we're postponing them like the BBC had a a production graduate scheme that was supposed to happen last year that I applied for um and I didn't get rejected I was like okay I haven't heard anything it still just says submitted this is like progress and then they were like yeah we're cancelling the scheme because of covid um and it's not even like they've postponed it where they're gonna all the people who applied this year or last year Mm -hmm. are gonna just carry over to 2021 it's like no we're just scratching you all and it's gonna start from a clean slate so like people who graduate this year are also going to be able to apply for it so it's going to be doubly as hard so Mm -hmm. it's yeah it's, it's not been easy but I do kind of feel though like I, I know so many people that have gone during lockdown, I want a career change, or this isn't actually the right path for me. I've actually got something that I thought was a hobby that's more of a passion. And I do think, hopefully, that might like filter out some of the people that aren't so passionate about film and TV and aren't willing to put in that commitment and aren't willing to like continually chase their dreams like you are. Yeah. And I think you inspire me so much in the fact that you you just carry on going and I wish I had something that I loved as much as you love film and tv because I just think it's amazing and and there's nothing that I can be like yeah I'd pursue that and it doesn't matter how many times I find like a stumbling block or like something that gets in the way that I would carry on and carry on carry on without kind of going is there actually something else that I want to do and I think it's a quality of you that I just it blows my mind. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, hi, thank girl. <laughs> yeah, I need that. So thank you. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about what you're doing because that's way more exciting. Oh, my word. So um, what am I doing? So I'm, I'm in London. I'm in the big city, really bustling. Oh, wait, lockdown. Um, but I've actually quite enjoyed having a quiet city because this no tourists because there's like less cars on the street less people walking around you get to like find the hidden gems of London so big tick for that love all my parks huge tick for that um so I'm I'm on a grad scheme at TK Maxx working for the best brands in God label section and it's in buying a merch so I'm in charge of like shipping the goods talking to buyers and I'm just going to be businesswoman of Brook Green. I um, don't know if I should have said where I lived. <laughs> um, any fans, please control yourselves. Um, I can edit that out. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you, yeah. tell, them, tell them what you graduated with and where you went to uni and all that. Uh, yeah, skipping ahead. I'm acting like you guys all know me. <laughs> um, so I went to Newcastle. I did a year out. I didn't go straight to university. Um which was great. I worked at Waitrose. So love the supermarkets out there. Got a a big affiliation to Waitrose. I walk in and I'm like, I'm home. (laughs) Um, And I did biomedical sciences. So not really anything related to the buying and merch world or the commercial world. But it was something that I thought if I was going to go to university, because we were so pushed to go to university, I don't think we were told anything about apprenticeships or um or internships or like any other pathway you could go down we were just told you finish college or sixth form you go to university like it was almost university or nothing Mm. which I loved university wouldn't say they were the best three years of my life but I wouldn't change it um and three years of biomedical sciences did a dissertation in vaccines so that's kind of happening (laughs) um and and then fell upon commercial world through an internship at l'oreal and then applied to tk maxx and i love it i i didn't think i was a bit skeptical about moving to london a bit skeptical about starting a graduate scheme especially in a virtual way and i wouldn't look back i the people i work with are so nice i'm in a really nice house i'm really fortunate and i know for every person that goes oh you're in London like you don't have a garden you're working in the virtual world I know there's like 10 people that are maybe living on their own or 
are a bit uncertain or don't love their job, but they're stuck in this virtual world anyway. So I'm really fortunate at the position that I'm in and I'm surrounded by so many people that check in on me, like Evie, like my boyfriend, like my best friends, that I don't, I've just got such a nice like little bubble that I'm just very fortunate in the position that I'm in. Should we do a little icebreaker? I know you are a big fan of icebreakers. Huge fan of icebreakers. So Just today, to give you guys like a little random fact and like tidbit of information about us. Yeah, and maybe we'll put a poll down and you guys can interact as well. Mm -hmm. Just adding extra work for Evie. <laughs> <laughs> like writes down furiously in her notepad. No, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> um, so today's is pizza or pasta? interesting for me that is like the easiest decision ever in the world um and for me it's got to be pizza I'm so intrigued I'm what, like, going pasta just, I don't know so if I went to like Italy pizza 100% I like the thin and crispy base I like a doughy crust mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of your dominoes or pizza hut that's just a bit too yeah. doughy but I eat a lot more pasta. So but do you enjoy it more than eating pizza? I just don't know because you can have an arabiata, you can have a cream sauce, you can have a pesto, you have a spaghetti. Like there is a pasta for every mood. You can yeah, but there's a pizza for every mood. People put like chocolate and marshmallows on pizza as like a dessert. You're not really selling it. No, I, to be fair, I've never had it. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know, but I know that that's a thing. I love that you've come up with the icebreaker and you don't even have an answer. Yes, I was so sure you were going to go pasta. I think really? I pizza, you know? Yeah. Because I think if I was to go out, I like having stuff that I wouldn't have at home. Mm. And although we do love a pizza night every now and again and we'll make the dough and the sauce, I just, there are some pizzas that just blow my mind. Like we had a takeaway on... New Year's Day, <gasps> Phoebe, the pizza. Where did it come from? It was from Adora in Kensington. And it just had the most amazing, like, puffy crust. It was a really thin base. We got margarita and then, like, a fancy margarita. And I won't lie, the fancy margarita wasn't as good as the margarita. I know. I, I don't like the hate that people who order margaritas get. Oh, I yeah. love a good margarita. Yeah. And just a normal arabiata. I don't need nothing fancy. I don't need your seafood. I don't need no fancy cheeses. I just need a tomato sauce. To be fair, I do love prawns in like a tomato pasta sauce though. Mm, this is where we differ. <laughs> Not a fan of seafood. It just tastes like fish. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it does. Not all of it does. Not all of it. True. I mean, so I will say while everyone's doing Veganuary, I'm going to try and broaden my horizons because Henry loves fish and we're going to do one fish dish. We're starting with like your most neutral fish, a cod. Oh, love a cod. Um, just to see, because I feel like I'm just so easily like, no, no, I don't like that. But mm. there could be a fish that I like. Are you having just cod, like just cod? Or are you going to have battered, breaded? Like what's the... I think we're doing a curry. Ooh, okay. I've never had cod in a curry. So we've seen like quite a few like fish curries and prawn curries. I'm not adventure enough to go to a prawn yet. Um, and we're going to ease myself in because then at least like it will just be the texture that I'll have to deal with. I won't have to deal with the flavour as well. So it'll be like. Is it, the nice texture, is it the texture of prawns you don't like? Because cod is really like when it's done well, it's like really like just soft and flaky. I don't know. I just, it's just everything about fish. The only fish that I know I'll eat is monkfish, which is just a very specific fish. I've never had monkfish. Oh, it is lovely. Wrap it in some pancetta. I'll make it. Ooh, nice. With some like asparagus on the side. Or something. Yes. <gasps> That's how I had it. Mm -hmm. Love that. <laughs> um, so I think, I think pizza, I think. Okay, good. We're in agreement then. 
I just really want to go to Italy. That was my dream. A month in Italy last year was all I wanted after university. And I had dreams of like walking along the Mount Amalfi Coast in like a linen white dress, hair flowing, looking like Lily Collins. I know. Was that the Mamma Mia one? Lily James. Lily James. Did she go to Lily Italy with Mamma Mia? Yeah, so the second Mamma Mia was filmed on the Amalfi Coast. Really? But I swear it's set in Greece. Yeah. I thought it was filmed in, like, Croatia. Oh, maybe I completely made that up. I always, when I think of Italy, I always think of um, Letters to Juliet. Oh, my word, yes. I know. But do you know what I think you might like? I discovered it. So I saw one of these YouTubers that I follow on Instagram. She has, like, seen this website called Window Swap. And basically, you, you, like, just search it in Google and you can like open a browser out of, and it's like other people showing their window views all um, around the world. And she has it just like on, cause she's a lawyer. So she has two screens uh-huh. and she has one screen with like the window view that like plays the sounds of whatever was in that window. And then like, so she can have it as a background. And it was, I tried it the other day not to do work cause I don't have any work to do. Yes. And then you press the little open, that's it yeah you press a little open in a new window button and it like you can keep changing till you find a a view that you like from different places around the world I'm obsessed I know it's so cool (gasps) oh can we just a second I know really nice by the way if you're listening to this on just audio (laughs) Imogen is on window swap and is showing me pictures if you're like hearing our gasps that's what we're looking at (laughs) sorry I forgot the window all (laughs) together but if you do want to go and like actually watch us remember you can check us out on YouTube Im and Evie let's be honest so true so I feel like this is a nice segue into a bit of advice okay um so as this is the first episode we're still doing the structure bear with us but um I thought it was quite nice because Evie and I are quite balanced when we're both together and I think you give me such great advice I'd like to think I give you really good advice too you do thank you um that was the only right answer <laughs> um, so we want to let you guys ask us a few questions and see if we can give you any advice but because this is the first episode um I think we're gonna go for do you want to go chasing your dreams or do you want to go lockdown um well I feel like we could incorporate them both in a way because I feel like just for me lockdown has obviously given a lot of people time to think so um and kind of prioritize what they want in life what they're doing and just assess your situation yeah so reset step back Success. yeah so for me they kind of intertwine because it's lockdown for me has just affirmed how badly I want to work in the film and tv industry and how much I just want to chase that dream and like I don't know about anyone else who has big aspirations like me but I literally like imagine myself like in 20 years like at an awards ceremony and just like you know just dreaming off in a different universe um yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, I mean, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to intertwine them both or have I just taken us down a path that is not where we want to go? I love it. Let's intertwine. Um, so do you want to kick off? Like how, how would you offer advice on how to chase your dreams or perhaps if you're not loving what you're doing or you're not happy with your situation, how would you chase it when so many avenues are currently closed off? Um, I think at work, the vibe was quite down on Monday and throughout the whole week because of we're kind of back to square one um but I think people need to remember like we are in a lockdown like give yourself a break grab that cup of tea if you feel like you need a day on the sofa have a day on the sofa if not you you chase your dreams but how would you go about doing it I think as you say it is hard because everything bar the supermarkets is closed at the minute so if you have you know dreams that are not at a supermarket then you are in a bit of a predicament but I would say for the thing for me that has got me through the most is realizing what makes you happy and just going for it and whether or not obviously at the moment I cannot go into the industry I want to go to because 
A, no one will give me a job and B, because it's just hard. But that hasn't, as I say, that hasn't stopped me from Mm. applying to jobs and doing, you know, whether you can do the tiniest little thing that's going to help you in a year's time, six months time when we can go out in the real world and do things, do that tiny little thing that you think is going to help you, whether it be just literally write down your goals as to what you want to achieve. That's, you know, that is a positive step forward. Um, But I think for people who don't know what they want to do, I think, honestly, just pick something that you enjoy. I I mean, I know that when we were looking at universities and things like that, I was torn between doing criminology and film and TV, just as a little context. And I also, for context, was not great at science at university, at school. So when I realised that, and I didn't really enjoy science, but (laughs) when I realised that criminology had a chunk of science in it I was like no because as much as I would have enjoyed doing criminology the science aspect would have just taken out all the fun of it so that's why I went to film and tv and I think deep down I always knew that that's what I wanted to do so I think they would always I would always give advice to people who particularly for choosing what to do at university and what to go for as a career do something you enjoy particularly for university because you're going to be tied into that for three or four years so you, true. you don't just want to do something that you get the highest grades in it's not about getting high incredible A's like that's great if you can do that but ultimately you you don't want to be miserable studying something or in a career that you find miserable you want to do something you enjoy so I feel like for, for me and for other people that is what you've got to decide first what brings you happiness what whether it's like something so mundane like just like I don't know cleaning if you love cleaning go and get yourself a cleaner job like if that's what brings you joy Mrs Hinch she loved cleaning and look where she is now exactly so and even if it's something as mundane as that or even if it's something as crazy as you want to be an astronaut go be an astronaut the world needs more astronauts Mm -hmm. just don't let for me it's like don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something because there's no proof of that what's the proof that you can't do something so true you know what I wouldn't change a single thing you've just advised, but I think, so I'm currently reading Barack Obama's autobiography. Yeah. Um, And so many people were like, you won't make it as president, but they wanted him to, but they were kind of like, should we just cut while we're ahead and you're, you're, you're in the Senate. Like, that's fine. That's great. But so many people were like, don't be like Icarus. Don't fly too close to the sun. But I, especially being surrounded by people like you who just completely champion me to pursue that dream that if I want to be like CEO you carry on working until you get there you carry on reading those books so you can deliver those speeches and influence people you manifest those dreams until they're a reality and that's so so important I think if you believe and invest there is nothing that can stop you and it doesn't matter what Tom Dick or Harry has said you can just prove them wrong. And then when they're sat there going, she chased her dreams, maybe that can inspire me to chase my dreams. People have reasons why they wouldn't encourage you. And it might be because they're unhappy in their life, but they're too scared to make that jump. And if you can make that jump and show them it's possible, I think all you've done is made yourself happier and inspired someone else to do the same. And I think that's all you can ask. But I think just be kind to yourself and it's not going to be like an immediate switch. You're not going to go, I want to be an astronaut and then the next day be on the moon. Like there is so much work between point A and your dream and there'll be meanders and you'll change your mind and you'll face blocks and people that aren't encouraging. And you just need to just remember what you want and what makes you happy and also something that makes you happy when you're 16 won't make you happy when you're 30 and And also yeah and also remember why you started doing the work in the first place like you've got to always remember where you started because you know why would you start something if you didn't have an end goal yeah I feel like this is a good tie-in to our little inspirational quote we might have yeah so every week we're going to leave you with a nice piece, a nice quote, something that's inspired us. So this week's quote is from C.S. Lewis and it is, you're never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. Love that. 
so apt so apt yeah so what are you gonna chase 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 i am gonna chase my dreams to be in film and tv no matter what that is everyone the thing is when i say that everyone's always like so you want to be in front of the camera and i'm like no hun i want to be steven spielberg <laughs> yeah oh my gosh can you imagine no that that would be incredible if i could be steven spielberg by then oh honey i don't have any doubt that you will be and you'll be on the graham norton show and be like oh my god this is so embarrassing how did you get this film of imogen and i talking on youtube <laughs> <laughs> yeah flashback to 10 years ago <laughs> oh funny anyway shall we um give a little teaser as to what we're going to be chatting about next week oh go for it so next week we have something right up my alley which is going to be talking about our favorite tv shows i know exactly what i want to talk about and i'm so excited i won't lie i've already made a list yeah <laughs> It might be one, guys. <laughs> yeah, it, it might be a long episode, but we'll we'll get there. We're gonna try. I think we might have some of the same shows. Yes. Definitely. So um, we will definitely be sharing our thoughts and feelings and opinions. Maybe our favorite quotes from the TV shows. Ooh, I adore that idea. Yeah. So if you want to hear those, stick around for next week. Um, and without further ado, you have been listening to me, Evie, and me, Ian. And this has been our podcast, Let's Be Honest. Cheers! Cheers!